Hey there, and welcome to my laser review of the fourth and I guess maybe possibly final installment in the Expendables franchise, The Expendables Part 4. And yeah, I'm not going to lie. Well, let's see. I got out of my Regal theater with the cup right here. You can tell I'm fresh out. Just threw some spray water in my hair. I'm drinking some Pepsi Zero, and I'm going to try some Wild Turkey Bourbon. And just real quick, you know, when Part 3 came out, I wasn't the biggest fan of Part 3 only because... For whatever reason, Stallone went with PG-13, and with these Expendables movie movies, I didn't think PG-13 was the best choice, but, and the box office did kind of suffer, so when they finally announced Part 4, that was like back in 2018, and now it's 2023, so, okay, but let's talk about it, and yeah, you know, I, before we get into it, all three films, they know what they are, they're fun, they're stupid, and they don't, like, ask much of you, and they don't give you much, but just old school 80s and 90s action vibes and okay but no drum roll just real quick some wild turkey and pepsi zero let's just swig this all right i'm an alcoholic that's good it tastes so good so before i start my intro real quick i have three questions which i always ask and number one is did i like this movie how'd i feel about it number two would i recommend this film should you go see it but number three and most importantly to me being blue collar is do I think this movie is worth your money? Should you wait for a matinee? Check it out on streaming services, Redbox, whatever, okay? But I'm going to drink some more of this stuff, which is pretty good. And then enjoy my intro, and we'll talk about The Expendables Part 4. You ready? I'm going to Wild Turkey, my God, I'm drooling. So Expendables Part 4 starts off, and no bullshit. The first 45 seconds is soothing action. Soothing action, 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 action. As I said earlier, I think part three was hurt because we need this hard R action. And yeah, we get that. We get explosions and we get knife fights and decapitations and throw cuts and everything's great, okay? So now we move on to our leader, our legend, the man himself of Sly Stallone, which is Barney. And what's he doing? He just has this mission that things don't go according to plan. Oh god, someone's gonna die. I won't spoil it for you because yes, it's a stupid action film, but maybe one of the team members doesn't make it out, and now the rest of the team has to get the revenge, but also still get the bad guy. And of course, it's a paper-thin plot, but let's be honest, you're not watching these films for the complex plot. The bad guy has some detonators, he has a nuke, he wants to start an international war. Been there, done that, and yeah, guys, it's just, that's pretty much it. That's the entire story. Okay, review is over, and I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> oh, come on! But not even joking, there's not much more to talk about, so let's get into my three lazy questions. Number one, and off the bat, is did I like this film? And truth be told, I didn't love this film, but I did like it a lot. It was a lot better than part three, and yeah, the action is, it is what it is. There were some scenes that had a little bit of green screen. I'm not sure why they did this for but still, the fight choreography is freaking awesome. And of course, you have legends like Tony Ja and the man himself, Statham. And Statham is freaking pushing 60, but the guy still moves like somebody who is half his age. So yes, I did like this movie. Didn't love it, but it was a pretty good time. So I had fun. Number two of would I recommend this film? And all I can say, guys, is that, listen, this is part four in a franchise. If you didn't like the first three, you're not going to like this one. It's simple as that. And this is not a complex plot, not complex characters. It's explosions, hot women, good fight choreography, and that's pretty much it. So I would only recommend this film, again, if you like the first three. If you like old school 80s and 90s action, very simple, very simple, very simple plot, and it is a little bit old-fashioned. And as a wise man said, sometimes we could use a little bit old-fashioned. People might just need a little old-fashioned. But then it comes down to my third question of, is this movie worth your money? And it's hard to say because that kind of intertwines with my second question of, would I recommend it? So I would say my final assessment is that this movie is worth your money if you're like me and you like stupid popcorn flick type action films. But for everybody else, I would say wait for this. And is it worth something on streaming or rental? I think in terms of an action film, it's, it's a very good rental. But I could see some people waiting for streaming. And yeah, for a lot of people, I can see a lot of people not rushing out and seeing this in theaters. I mean, let's be honest, it's not as action-packed and well-developed as, say, John Wick 4, or not as well-paced or well-acted as, as, say, Equalizer 3. So 
I mean, how am I going to rate this film? It just comes down to The Expendables Part 4 is a very good popcorn flick. And yeah, I just, I have to give it a little bit more credit because Stallone knows what he's about. The guy is 75 years old, doesn't look it, and he's still in fantastic shape, but he lets a younger generation sit there and have the action scenes. But this is my main criticism going to this, which is why I'm saying hold off to rush out in theaters, is that this happens every time you have these ensemble casts, that if you look at the X-Men films, everyone knows the main character is Hugh Jackman slash Wolverine. This being the Expendables and the trailers and the marketing said this whole new wave of new blood, eh, honestly, the new characters of Megan Fox, which she's so gorgeous by the way, you have 50 Cent, you have, of course, the legend of Tony Ja, you have Randy uh, Kocher, Kocher, and of course, Dolph Lundgren. The problem is, these guys don't do anything until the third act. And Jason Statham, the guy looks fantastic for his age. I still believe he could take on 10 guys. He can still hold up with the fight choreography. Awesome. But the main issue is that 95% of the action scenes are all Statham, which is, it's great. I mean, Statham can hold his own film, and he does. Statham can be a badass, and he is. But in terms of a team-up film, well, what's the point of having the Expendables team if you have one guy doing all the fucking work? But it is a lot better than part three. I would highly recommend it over the third film. And you know what? If this is the final Expendables film, this is a pretty good send-off to these characters. And I enjoyed it for what it is, okay? That's, that's all I can say. As I always do, I'm going to check my friggin' watch because I'm always low on time. I'm going to edit this and finish this drink and then grab Bender for you guys. I'll see you later. Let's go. This calls for a drink. Oh, yeah. Catchphrase. It's called a catchphrase. I will see you later because I'm heading back to work.